You can tell the pitmasters are making the magic happen every time you walk through the doors of Kreitz Market. The delicious smell of smoked meats greets your every visit. Not going to be in Lockhart for a while? Kreitz Market ships nationwide. Stop by Kreitz Market at 619 North Colorado in Lockhart or find us on the web, kreitzmarket.com. That's K-R-E-U-Z market.com. No sauce, no forks, just good taste naturally. First Lockhart National Bank has been meeting the needs of Caldwell County since 1889. We now serve Travis County with a branch on Slaughter Lane and Hayes County with a branch in Kyle, plus a brand new location in San Marcos. As a member of each of the communities we serve, our relationship bankers, tellers, loan officers, and managers are committed to achieving the financial goals of every customer, one interaction at a time. So whether you're dreaming of a new house, buying a boat, or sending your children off to college, First Lockhart National Bank will be there every step of the way with financial services and guidance you can trust. Parenting is full of surprises. You never know what to expect. So after our son was born, I called my Texas Farm Bureau insurance agent to set up a life insurance policy in case something happened to me. Sawyer is now two. And we'll soon have a sister. There's no one else I would trust with protecting my family. Coverage and discounts are subject to qualifications and policy terms and may vary by situation. Hello, Americans. Mark Twain said, a broken promise is better than no promise at all. Well, you and I both know when we make a promise, we keep it. Chuck Nash Auto Group has been doing that for years. They offer up the kind of one-on-one -on -one service that will follow the taillights of your pre-owned vehicle deep into that gorgeous Texas sunset. By the way, Chuck Nash will give you $750 more for your car, buy or trade. And now you know the best of the story. All right, we're here in Lockhart, Texas, <clears throat> where the uh, Lady Lions will be taking on the Anderson Trojans. And this is for all the marbles tonight. We have uh, the Trojans come in at 9-1 in district play. Their only loss was to the Lady Lions, where we beat them 9-1 to on the road. Tamar Reyna hit a two-run homer and a grand slam in that game and uh, had many of the RBIs for that game. I want to say she had seven of the nine RBIs that night. But uh, anywho, they were going up against a team we had beaten 9-1 to at their field. Um, actually, the Lady Lions were down early in the, in the game as they – first inning gave up a solo home run in the first inning and never gave up a run the rest of the game tonight we could see some excitement as uh, the wind is blowing out and uh, with some of the girls that we have that can hit the ball we could be seeing some long balls tonight so hopefully we will and uh, we'll get that thing going I want to give a shout out to Randy Fry the Rockin' Rev the man who started Lion Country Broadcast Network about seven eight years ago um, he was the guy that got all this started, and he's actually the guy that got me involved six or five years ago. I moved to town six years ago, uh, but five years ago he got me into this, and uh, I started out as a uh, producer and did a little color commentary, and they needed someone for boys basketball that season, and I went ahead and did boys basketball, and then they decided from that point on I should be the voice of Lion Country. So without Randy, I would not have this position, and I want to thank him in advance as um, he is the guy that got all this going. Uh, throughout the night, I'll be giving some shout outs throughout the guys who were key into my broadcasting career. So tonight again, we have the, the Trojans from Anderson. They're here from Austin. This is for all the marbles. If the Lady Lions win, there's no way anybody's catching them as district champions. And so it's a huge game for the Lady Lions tonight. Um, again, 9-1, to one, that was the closest game the Lady Lions have had. We're going to have the national anthem, so I'm going to quit talking real quick.
<laughs> oh, Larry and the umpire, they have the play ball thing going. They got it timed out perfectly. So we are here, and uh, again, giving shout-outs. I give a shout-out to Randy Fry, my QA, the man that got me started in all this. In here in the press box, we, uh, we have Larry Rodriguez, who's the PA announcer, the voice of the Lady Lions here at the stadium. And then, of course, Christy Rania, she, she's our bodyguard. Nobody messes with us with her here. And uh, she also plays the music in the background. And, and that's, that's our team. Um, I'll be doing the producing, the thing. I'm a solo writer tonight, so I'll be doing it all. But we're looking forward to a really good game tonight. And the, it, looks, it appears that there's no more rain. It looks like, like I said, the wind is blowing out. So we could see the, the homer hammer going after it. Um, we might see some long ball tonight. Um, both teams have some really good players, and this is going to be the definite game to want to be watching. Over on the other stadium, the boys' baseball team will be going at 7 o'clock tonight. My buddy over there, Emilio Juarez, will be running the show, the Sarge, as I always give him a hard time. The only talent in his group is his wife, but he knows I'm just joking, kind of. Anywho. Uh, Emilio's got his boys going to do the boys game over there, and hopefully he'll be giving me some updates as we go along. And um, we might actually see darkness tonight. Um, we have only seen it one time with the girls, and tonight hopefully will be that first time. So for the Lady Trojans leading off is going to be the left fielder, uh, number six, Reese. As Leah, Her Leah Herrera is going, she's Leah's going. She's been pitching well all year. I think the only bad inning I've ever seen her pitch was the last game we had. In her first inning, she struggled a little bit, and that was it. Then she shut them down from there on out. So uh, it's going to be a good night for softball. We're just waiting for the umpire to get him in there, and this is for all the marbles here. Squaring the bunt. Swing and a miss, strike one. A little high, one and one. And I'm liking the fact that the wind is going stronger to the outfield, so we might see some long ball tonight. That's what we're kind of hoping for. The largest... Girls softball <laughs> uh, diamond, probably in the Texas area or this district area. Coaches wanting to move the fences in a little bit next year to make it to where it's like everybody else's. But we still could see some long balls tonight. Two and one to count. The Reese is the batter. Squaring up to bunt. Hit down the left field line. Tamar comes up with it, but it was a little bit slow getting to her after it bounced off the third baseman's glove. And there will be a reach by an error. So the leadoff hitter's on. Pais is up to bat. Number two, the left-handed center fielder. Possibly a slap or a bunt, sacrifice bunt here. And she's definitely a slapper. So 1-0 and the count. Obviously, both teams are going to be feeling some nerves. Senior night for the Lady Lions. Two and zero the count. Now, Lacey always does a great job behind the plate for the Lady Lions. And three and zero. So Leah's having a little trouble finding the zone already tonight. And kind of like the other night. Once she gets in rhythm, she will be fine. And they're going to walk her. So we have runners at first and second. Now to bring up the shortstop, number 11, Juju Hernandez. Two runners on, one reached by an error, the other one by walk. Hernandez is the shortstop. I understand that this is the girl who can pound the ball. 
So 1-0 and is the count. That's five straight balls pitched. There's the strike. 1-1. One and one. Usually this umpire is one that will make you swing the bat. Ooh, now I say that. And <laughs> two and one is the count now. Two runners on, no outs. Here at the top of the first inning, which that just reminded me, I need to update my scoreboard. I apologize. And she'll walk her. So struggles early on. Now batting, first baseman, number 14, Laura. Laura. Hmm, coach is on his way out there right now, and I'm going to check the phone. So coach is done talking, and of course, my my real job during the daytime is <laughs> is messaging me while I'm trying to call a game. Bases are loaded, no outs. Brings up number 14, Flores, the first baseman. Right down the middle of the plate, strike one. Oh, he called it a ball? Oh, one and oh. I must be at a, I'm going to move my cough drop so I can see better. Because <laughs> I don't look like a straight. <clears throat> one and one. That's what I needed to do is move my cough drops. One and one the count. Bases loaded here. Top of the first inning. No score. Pop fly. It's going to drop. And one run will score. Headspeth does a great job of keeping it in front of her. So an in, uh, a single that didn't clear the outfield very much. Bases are still loaded. It brings up the third baseman, number 15, Jackson. Bases are still loaded. I'm sure the fact that there's probably wetness on the, the ball. She's asking for a new ball. So no outs, bases loaded. Jackson the batter, strike one. Nothing to get alarmed about. We have great sticks and the fact that we did this last game too and we, we bounced back just fine. Pop fly. First baseman's there and makes the catch. Job by Toll. So one out brings up the uh, pitcher, Velazquez. I saw her pitching before the, the, the game, and she's definitely going to be the fastest pitcher we've faced. They're going to say ball one on that. Bases loaded, one out. Foul ball. So one on the count, one out here, bases loaded. Fouls it off again. One and two. Ooh, the little change up. Two and two.
Fly ball around down the right field line is out of play. It'll remain two and two with one out. Swing and a miss, struck her out. Two outs. That'll bring up um, number nine, Harrell, I believe, the uh, catcher. But the, she has wears number eight. So they gave us the bogus number. She's number eight. 0 and 1 is your count. Foul ball out of play. Strike two. So two outs, 0 2 count. Bases loaded here in the top of the first. So far, one run is all they've managed to get. It would be fantastic if we could get out of this and leave the bases strand or bases loaded, stranded. Again, Harrell has a 0-2 count. Oh, struck her out looking, and she K's the last two girls. That is the way to pitch the ball and get out of trouble. So they had one run, one hit, one air was committed. And three people left on base, and after a half inning of play, it is 1-0. Lady Lions coming to bat. You're watching Lion Country Broadcast Network, fueled by Vipe Live. Dr. Peterson and his staff at Chisholm Trail Clinic of Chiropractic are here to serve you. We've been voted best chiropractor and best chiropractor's office for five years running. Are you bothered by headaches, back pain, or neck pain? Call Chisholm Trail Clinic of Chiropractic at 512-668-4163 to make your appointment. Mention this ad to receive a consultation, exam, and x-rays if needed for only $20. Call 512-668-4163 and begin your journey to hope, healing, and health. Johnny and Sons Pain and Body has been Lockhart's premier collision repair and auto body shop since 1967. Certified iCar Standard, the highest ranking in the collision industry. For all your collision needs, come by and see Johnny and Sons 400 Blackjack in Lockhart. Johnny and Sons Pain and Body, we won't steer you wrong. Chisholm Trail Barbecue features slow cooked brisket, hot sausage, beef, and pork ribs done the right way. In a town famous for barbecue, Chisholm Trail is where the locals come to eat. Visit Chisholm Trail Barbecue, 1323 South Colorado in Lockhart, and come by after the game. Chisholm Trail Barbecue stays open until midnight after every home football game. All right, we're back here in Lockhart, Texas. Wanted to give a shout out to the Family members who may be listening to this broadcast, I know that the wife, Vanessa, is at home. And give a shout-out to her, her mother, Louise Weir. Thank you for listening. To Mackenzie Smith and Nate, or actually it's Elaire now. I forgot she got married. Married to that guy named Nate. Also Gunnar Smith and Miranda Keener. And to Clarence and Roberta Smith in Austin, Texas, who've been watching every game I've done for the past five years. Now it brings up the Lady Lions in the bottom of the first. We'll see how we do against one of the better pitchers we've had this year. So bottom of the first. And she brings a strike. So one and one to Vega, number one, Ava Vega. She's also one of the pitchers. They have a new thing here, kind of like when the boys intercept a pass, recover a fumble. When the girls jack one, knock it out of the park, you get to slam the hammer. Pop foul, and it's caught by the third baseman. She came a long way to get that, too. So out number one. So number 10, Tori Escobedo coming to the plate. I want to give a shout-out real quick to Ava Vega, Leah Herrera, 
Elizabeth Smith, Tori Escobedo, and Melissa Parada, the five seniors on this softball team. Slap up the middle, and she's going to single. Beautiful job of starting the game off for Pareda, or, or for uh, Escobedo, and she's going to get to second on a wild throw. She gets a single and then advances on an air. So Leah Herrera, another one of those seniors, the pitcher. On deck has been basically the offensive player of the game in every single broadcast we've had. We'll see if she can continue the string. High on the pitch, and coach looks like he might be getting a little aggressive on the base running here. As Escobedo was halfway down <laughs> from second to third. Trying to get them to throw. Two and O's account to Herrera. <laughs> Three and O. I'm going to turn my mic up if it happens. So we have the mom of the person that's on deck in here, and if she hits one out, we're going to have to turn the mic up and listen. <laughs> There's base on balls. Brings up Tamar Reyna, the junior shortstop. She's already committed to Concordia University. So her senior year, she just gets to concentrate on punishing softballs as she already knows where she's heading to college. So two runners on, one out here in the bottom of the first, one nothing. Trojans are on top. Ball one. High fly ball, and they drop, so she lives for another day. One and one to count, one out, two runners on. Outside, two and one. I would think a single would score one easily. Grounder right up the middle. The pitcher gets her glove on it. The runner's coming home. The throw to the plate is no, not in time. And Raina will get to second. Great job there. So the Lady Lions will tie it up here off the Reina. Hit up the middle. So Reina will get the RBI. It is a single. She barely got her glove on it. Nice hit up the middle. And then the, they advanced. Heads up base running. Great coaching on the coaching staff there. Brings up another one of the seniors. Melicia. Pareda, and she is a left-hander who has plenty of power. So, one-to-one -one is your score here in the bottom of the first inning. Again, give a shout-out to the Rock and Rev, Randy Fry, the QA tonight, making sure everything looks and sounds good. Runners at second and third with one out. So 
So 1-0 the count. Inside, 2-0. and oh. Swing and a miss, and if she would have connected with that one, who knows? Two and one the count. She got a hold of that one, fouls it off, two and two. So with Reina at second base, a single here could score two runs. And the wild pitch is going to give the Lady Lions the lead here. And Reina is going to try to score, and she's safe. Heads up base running by Reina, and we score two runs on a wild pitch. Three to one now is the score. So much like the first time they met, nine to one was the score. They scored first and the Lady Lions scored nine to end them off. And here we are at three to one here in the bottom of the first. Walked her. So she's going to get on a base. Got to bring up Jasmine Hitsmith. The right fielder had a nice game in her last one. So Renteria is on running as our catcher will put her gear back on. Ball is high, 1-0. and oh. High fly ball, short stop's got a beat on it. But she can't come up with it, and that's going to have runners at first and second. And yes, that is the Barney song. <laughs> so Elizabeth Smith, another one of those seniors, the DH or extra hitter kind of person in the lineup tonight. Runners at first and second, one out, three to one, Lady Lions on top. Swing and a miss. Strike two. There's a single to right field. It could score a run. She's on her way to home. Here's the throw. It is cut off. The Lady Lions will score again. Nice hit by Smith. Zoe wanting to warm up to a really good song here. Zoe Pompa the batter. She's a third baseman. 
I watched her play JV last year, and she hit a ball that never landed. Runners at first and second, one out here. <laughs> Goodness, the pitch gets by, the runners advance. So Pompa trying to trying to put this game on ice here in the bottom of the first. She says runners at second and third. And she's swinging for the fence right now with that first one. And 0-2 painted that corner. The eighth batter here in the bottom of the first. Fouls it off, so she's still alive in there. It's unfortunate that I'm not able to move the camera as I'm calling this game because if Tamar does go yard, it would be kind of neat to film what goes on in here. <laughs> no two count. Ball one, she was like, oh, goodness, why did I look at that? Zoe thought she was going to go sit down. So one and two, one out, runners at second and third. Two and two. Swing and a miss, struck her out. That's out number two. So the number nine hitter, Mackenzie Mendoza, the second baseman, has the runners in scoring position with two outs. In the dirt. Fly ball to left field. It's going to be in there for the single. It gets by the outfielder. Both runs will score. Mendoza's on her way to second. Head first slide, and she is safe. So Mendoza doubles to left. She was the second base for the outfielders, even knew where the ball was. So we're back to the top of the order. Their coach goes out to talk to him, so we'll kind of recap what's taking place right now. Six runs here in the bottom of the first. Keep in mind it was nine to one the last time these teams played. We're already at six. So we had, um, so far we had one, two, three, four, five hits, four singles and a double. We've scored six runs. Um, there's really not been any errors, so to speak. I guess you could have called the one on the pitcher, but um, that was a pretty hard hit, too. So one strikeout. But anyways, that's where we stand. And the Lady Lions aren't done yet. They have two outs and a leadoff hitter's up. She popped out to the third baseman, her first at bat. And in that, in her defense, that third baseman traveled quite a ways to make that catch. But everybody has seen the pitcher now. So... You may not see evening time here if this continues. I've only worked one game in the dark, and that was the last one. Vega, who is the other pitcher for the team, she gets hit. Bases are, or, well, first and second. I'm sorry, I thought there were two on. So she gets hit by the pitch. So Tori Escobedo, who singled and scored her on her first at bat, 
Keep in mind, we're still in the first inning here, 6-1, to one, Lady Lions on top. Lady Lions win. They are district champions. One and zero the count. The last time she just slapped it straight up the middle, and there was nobody there. She could do it again this time, as the shortstop is really playing on third base side. Two and zero. She tried to go down the first baseline and fouls it off. Three and one. Four balls, and she will walk. The bases are now loaded for Leah Herrera. So Leah walked her first time up, scored a run. This would be a great time for her to help her cause as the pitcher. Ooh, down the third base line and into the dugout. There's a line drive to the center fielder, and she'll make the catch. That just saved them. A line drive to center field will end the inning. But a great first inning it was. The Lady Lions were able to score six runs. And uh, we're going to take a real quick commercial break, give some sponsors some love. You're watching Lion Country Broadcast Network, fueled by Vibe Live. Part Design Build LLC is a general contractor who resides and serves Lockhart residents and surrounding communities. Part Design Build LLC is a local builder established in 2006 and is insured, bonded, and accredited by the Better Business Bureau. Part Design Build LLC provides both residential and commercial new construction, remodeling services, and specializes in kitchen and bath design. Call 512-784-6940 or email kpartdesignbuild at yahoo.com to schedule a consultation with free estimate. Follow them on Facebook at Kpart Design Build and at Kpart Kitchen Bath. Green Group Holdings is a proud sponsor of Lion Country. Green Group is an environmental services company that specializes in the planning, implementation, and operation of waste disposal, recycling, reuse, and restoration projects. These projects are designed with the environment and safety as the highest priorities, with an approach that provides significant value to the communities in which they're located. Currently, Green Group is proposing a development in northern Caldwell County, 130 Environmental Park. This proposed project will be a state-of-the-art, environmentally friendly, mixed-use development a few miles north of Lockhart, Texas. All right, we're back here top of the, um, the second, and it'll be Scalaban leading it off the right fielder. <clears throat> Want to give a shout-out to the Pearl. Up, she squares up to Bunt, and that's strike number one. But give a shout-out to the Pearl. Ronda Reagan Realty, Diesel Dogs, Snap Fitness, State Farm, and Westies. Thank you, folks, for your sponsorships. Ground ball, Reyna over to first, and she dropped it. So 
So they reach on an error by the first baseman there. <clears throat> brings up the second baseman, Holly Cobb. Runner at first. Squares up, puts it down, and it's foul. Owen won the count here, top of the second. Runner on by air. Number nine hitter for the Trojans. The bunt is fair. And so both runners are safe. So the infield single. So Reese, the leadoff hitter, reached on an air on third base and scored a run. Six to one, top of the second. Oh, no, thank you. Line drive gets through, and it gets through the left fielder. A run's going to score, possibly two. Here comes the throw to the plate, but they're going to cut it off. So they got a single through. Runner actually scored two. I'm sorry. So things not starting well here in the top of the second. That'll be up Pais who walked, but she did not score. So we're now at six to three. Trojans are not gonna roll over and die for the Lions, that's for sure. They're back battling. Wild pitch, runners on her way to third. Two and zero oh is the count. <coughs> she walked Piaz in four straight pitches the last time, and she's thrown two here. Three and zero. Oh. And walked her in four straight pitches again. Runners at first and third now. So Hernandez will come to the plate, the shortstop. She walked her first at bat. Line drive down the third baseline is foul. Got to be careful with this one. She has a nice swing. Melissa goes out, talks to Leah a little bit, get her to calm down, and 0 oh and 1 the count here to Hernandez. Inside and high, they fake the throw to second. So runners at second and third, one and one, no outs here in the top of the second. Six three, Lady Lions on top. Again, this is for the district championship. Wow, 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 wow. Two and one.
And it hits her, so that's going to load the bases. So Flores will come to the bat. She singled, got the only hit of the first inning, and uh, drove in a run. Right now we're in a scary situation with the bases loaded again, and there's no outs. Now the good news, I guess, for the Lady Lions is that the girls that followed after Flores had struggled with uh, trying to get hits, and two of them struck out. So maybe we can get the same thing to happen here. But we definitely do not want them to blow up and get, you know, some base hits with the bases loaded because that would not spell well for the Lady Lions. It's going to end up being a who's going to outscore who kind of game. Flores gets it through. Oh, no, Tamar comes down with it. Tags the girl at third. What a great play by Tamar Reyna. Holy cow, she just saved us there. Beautiful defensive play. So out number one. That'll be a fielder's choice for Flores. Jackson comes up. She popped out to first base her last at bat. Strike number one. Got her. Strike two. One and two, the count. Six to four is your score. Top of the four, or second. I don't know why I'm trying to think fourth. It's the second. One and two is the count. Runners at first and second. A little high and outside. Two and two. <coughs> Foul ball, and out of play. <coughs> Excuse me. One out, runners at first and second, two and two the count. Two Jackson, in the dirt, full count. Outside, she walks her. Base is loaded again. So it brings up the pitcher, Velasquez, who actually struck out swinging her first at bat. She could help herself out here with the bases loaded and one out. Foul ball out of play. Fly ball. Center fielder's on her horse. It's going to drop in. They're going to try to get the girl at third. And she does. They called a bobble. 
So the bases are still loaded. And he's going to call her out. And now the other coach is going to go talk to him. So we have two outs now. Runners at first and second. The runner at third was called out. So Harold, the catcher, will come up. She struck out looking her last at bat. So two outs, runners at first and second. Fly ball to right field. Headsmith is there and makes the catch, and that'll end the inning. So they were able to score five runs in the, or four runs in the inning to give them five for the game. So we will go to the bottom of the second inning where the Lady Lions still hold on to a six to five lead. You're watching Lion Country Broadcast Network, fueled by Vipe Live. Green Group Holdings is a proud sponsor of Lion Country. Green Group is an environmental services company that specializes in the planning, implementation, and operation of waste disposal, recycling, reuse, and restoration projects. These projects are designed with the environment and safety as the highest priorities, with an approach that provides significant value to the communities in which they're located. Currently, Green Group is proposing a development in northern Caldwell County, 130 Environmental Park. This proposed project will be a state-of-the-art, environmentally friendly, mixed-use development a few miles north of Lockhart, Texas. For over 15 years, Raina Drywall and Paint has been serving Lockhart and the surrounding counties. We are experienced in all phases of construction. You can count on us for any exterior or interior painting job. Call 512-925-0634 to schedule an appointment with Raina Drywall and Paint today. Come on in to Texas Oil Express, where we can change your oil in under 10 minutes. We also do inspection stickers. Be sure to shop Lockhart first and check us out on Facebook. Voted Caldwell County's best oil change in 2007, 2008, 2009, 2010, 2013, 2018, and 2019. All right, we're back here, bottom of the second, six to five. Ley line still on top, but they've been struggling on the on the defensive side of things where usually they're pretty flawless. Three errors by the Lady Lions so far tonight. And it brings up the girl who's just been punishing the softball this year. Shortstop to Marina. She's singled and drove in a run and scored. Out of the zone for her. We're again in the second. We batted around. Well, not around, but we got through the first of the part of the lineup. 
Right now we are at the number four hitter for the Lady Lions. There's a fly ball, but a little early. One and one's a count. Tonight, if you just get it up in the air and put some steam behind it, you are probably going to get a, a round tripper. Two and one the count. Anybody that's done any homework on this batter, you probably don't even want to throw strikes. Fly ball and out of play. Two and two. Fly ball down the left field line, but goes foul. Okay. Stays two and two. Three and two. Fly ball. Catcher's under it. And she misses it. New life. Three and two to the leadoff hitter here in the top or bottom of the second. Lady Lions on top, six five. Fly ball to left center field, and it's off the scoreboard and a home run for Tamarena. And now they will bring out their new weapon, Reyna, the junior. That ball didn't have a chance. Now let's go watch her as she's going to slam the hammer down. Seven to five tomorrow, Reyna. It was like watching Bo Jackson hit a baseball. It was not even going to have a chance. A home run, and I've got to say, I've got to give props. Mom didn't go crazy. I was hoping for that to happen. I was excited, and she didn't do anything except for clap. So Pareda, who walked, scored a run, and drove in two in her last at bat, makes it 7-5 here. Strike number one. Fly ball, third baseman on it, and she can't get to it. New life for Pareda. 0-2 is the count. So the Lady Lions have been pretty fortunate on foul balls. They've only caught one foul ball so far. Real quickly, going to give a shout-out to Jeffrey Michelson and Kevin Mills, the board of Lion Country Broadcast Network. Again, gentlemen, thank you for allowing me to do this for five years, calling games for Lion Country Broadcast Network.
thousand off. Perado with an 0-2 count, no outs. Bottom of the second inning, seven to five. Lady Lions on top. Now here's another girl you do not want to put the ball in her wheelhouse or you're going to be chasing it over the fence too. Two and two. Why is it my eyes or do I see the softball still sitting in the outfield? Just about snuck it in. So she was either trying to line it down the left field line or hit her coach in the head. I don't know which, but two and two is still the count. That's a little dinker that gets caught by the shortstop for out number one. So again, one out brings up the right fielder, Jasmine Headspeth, who singled and scored her on her last at bat. Seven to five here in the bottom of the second. Off the end of the bat, catch, uh, third baseman makes the catch. Two outs. So that's two straight kind of squib hits off the bats that have ended up being outs. Brings up Liv Smith, who singled, scored a run, and drove in a run. Nice single to right field, her first at bat. In the dirt, ball one. Two and zero. Oh. Two and zero oh here. Two outs. Bottom of the second. Seven to five. Lady Lions. Fly ball to right field. It looks like it's going to find the gap, and it does. And she's going to head to second, and has a stand up double. So it brings up the third baseman, Zoe Pompa. She struck out her first time up. A single would definitely drive Smith in. Get those rally caps on, the two-out rally, trying to get this thing broken open here. On deck is Mackenzie Mendoza, who doubled her last at bat. Ball one to Zoe. Two and oh. I'm still just kind of disappointed. I mean, if my kid would have hit a home run, I'd have been going crazy. 
Two and oh, two outs, runner at second. Three and oh, and Smith's gonna get to third. So 3-0 the count. And there's strike number one. Swing and a miss, strike two. Went fishing on that one. Three and two the count, two outs. Runner at third is Smith. And there's a line drive down the left field line, but it's about a foot foul. That was very close. The Lady Lions will be on the road I believe it's Navarro Tuesday, and that'll end the regular season. Swing and a miss, they got her. And that's how the second inning's gonna end, a strikeout. But we did get a run, and that's now after two complete. It is seven to five. You're watching Lion Country Broadcast Network, fueled by Vibe Live. For over 15 years, Raina Drywall and Paint has been serving Lockhart and the surrounding counties. We are experienced in all phases of construction. You can count on us for any exterior or interior painting job. Call 512-925-0634 to schedule an appointment with Raina Drywall and Paint today. For your plumbing service work in Caldwell County, call Darren Meitler from Meitler Plumbing at 512-398-3146. Meitler Plumbing, a local and family business, has been in the Caldwell County area for over 30 years. Voted best plumber in Caldwell County multiple times. Holds a master's license and bonded. Call Meitler Plumbing for your plumbing service work at 512-398-3146. Owner Darren Meitler, a 1989 Lockhart alumni and football captain for for the Lockhart Lions. Go Lions! Once a lion, always a lion. Central Texas Refuse LLC is a highly respected full service waste collection and recycling company serving Central Texas and the surrounding areas. CTR has proudly been servicing the cities of Round Rock, Cedar Park, and Lockhart for decades. CTR is one of the largest independent waste collection service companies in Central Texas. Founded in 1981, CTR has grown through organic expansion and currently operates from four primary locations in Southeast East Austin, Round Rock, Lockhart, and from Wilco, a comprehensive single stream recycling facility in Williamson County. CTR is honored to be a sponsor of Lockhart High School Boys and Girls Sports. Go Lions! All right, we're here top of the third. Seven to five the score, Scalaman the batter. She sees ball one in her first, or her second trip. She uh, reached on an air by the first baseman, her last at bat. And it's a hit. Nice backhand by Mendoza for the out. Beautiful defensive play. So it'll bring up Holly Cobb. Again, Mendoza, beautiful backhand. Turn around, made a nice throw. Keep him at bay. Cobb the batter, singled and scored a runner first at bat. Ball one is how that one is scored. Outside, 2-0. Oh. 
the surprise for me has been Leah Herrera. She usually doesn't struggle as much as she has tonight. A lot of walks, some hit batsmen, and, and normally she's just on fire, see if she can get back on it. There it is. Beautiful pitch. Two and one. Number nine hitter of the batter. Brings up, will bring up Reese next, who's reached on an air by the third baseman and single. The fly ball. Rain is under it, and she makes the play. There's two outs. So Reese, as I said, has reached on an air by the third baseman. She's single, drove in two runs, and scored two runs. Fly ball. Mendoza can't make the play. They kind of didn't know who was going to take the play, so we have another error. <clears throat> that is the fourth error by the Lady Lions tonight. Pais has walked twice. She has not even seen a strike tonight. She's been, she's been walked on eight straight uh, balls. And there's a ball. So seven to five, top of the third has been an exciting ball game. The girls just need to relax a little bit because too many errors by the Lady Lions thus far have made it to where the score is what it is right now. Inside, the ball gets past the catcher. And on the way to second goes Reese. Two and O's account, two outs. There's a blooper. Raina runs it down and ends the inning. She says, I think I'll take this inning over. So no runs scored on an air. One person left. We've played two and a half. It is the Lady Lions seven. The Lady Trojans 5. You're watching Lion Country Broadcast Network, fueled by Vibe Live. All right, going to come back and... Uh, Go to the sponsorships of people who do not have commercials. The Pearl, Ronda Reagan Realty, Diesel Dogs, Snap Fitness, State Farm, and Westies. So going to take time now here in the middle of the ball game to give a shout-out to another person who has had a lot to do with my career in broadcasting, Chuck Licata. Chuck Licata was actually the voice the very first year I was here, filling in for Emilio Juarez and uh, – I will never forget when he, when I was told I was his color commentating guy that his words out of his mouth were, when I'm talking, you're not. And I always remembered that, is when the guy is talking, don't give any color commentary. So <clears throat> get to give that shout-out to Chuck Licata. Thank you, sir, for being a mentor, just like the Rock and Rev, Randy Fry. So after playing great defense there in the last inning, Mackenzie Reynolds, uh, Mendoza, I'm sorry, Mackenzie Mendoza will come up. She doubled and drove in two runs, her first at bat. Fouls it off. I wish I'd have had a glove. This is our number nine hitter. It's nice when your number nine hitter hits a double. Outside. Good 
Two and one. Little bit of a chin music thing going on there. Three and one is the count. No outs here to Mendoza. And there goes our base runner. And she thought about running the second. <laughs> So Mendoza's at first with a walk. Vega, who's popped out to third and been hit by a pitch tonight. Again, we're in the bottom of the third. It is seven to five, Lady Lions. This is for all the marbles. The bunt is down. Sacrifice at first. Runner on her way to third. Oh, they called her out. So they get a double play on that one. So the sacrifice to first base, and then they throw her out at third. So it started out with a leadoff runner, and now we have nobody on with two outs. And it'll bring up Escobedo. She has singled and walked and scored a run. Two and zero the count. Larry made a comment earlier in the game, and I'm I've been watching ever since he said that. And you know, Anderson's getting away with stuff here because the pitcher is not supposed to be looking at the coach. She's supposed to get her signs from the catcher, and she looks right in the dugout almost every pitch. Inside three and zero. So maybe Escobedo could get on with another walk. And there's a strike. Whoa. I don't know what that was about, but <laughs> catcher threw it to first, and I don't know why. Three and one is the count now, two outs. Bottom of the third, seven to five, Lady Lions on top. Again, this is for the district title tonight. Way high. She's going to move on down. Number three batter, Leah Herrera, walked and scored a run and lined out to center field. I mean, she tagged that ball but hit it right at the center fielder with the bases loaded in the inning in the first. So Escobedo at first, Herrera the batter. Oh, and we'll get a swipe there. So Escobedo is now at second. Singles going to drive her in, and now the coach is coming out asking that maybe she left early. I'm going to. So one and out, one and zero is the count here. Bottom of the third, two outs. Line drive up the middle. Herrera's ball is going to get to the wall. Escobedo will score. Herrera is going to get a stand-up double. Eight. 
And that'll bring up Lady Killer of the home run ball. So Reyna has singled, homered, and driven in two runs tonight. And they walked her. They don't want to mess with her anymore. So she'll reach on an intentional walk. So what do you do when you're a senior catcher that bats left-handed when someone walks the player in front of you? You make them pay. Eight to five is the score, and this young lady has the power to take the ball out of the park. So if somebody gets, basically what they're saying is we're going to walk her because we want to get to you, now you make them pay. One and O's account. Two and O's account. Harold's done an actually done a good job of keeping the ball in front of her for the most part. I mean, the pitcher's been a little bit wild, and she's been able to keep it in front of her. A few times we were able to get some runs out of him. But Harold's done a great job defensively behind the plate for the Trojans. So far as was one run in the first four in the second, none in the third for the Trojans. And so far the, for the Lady Lions, it was six in the first, one in the second, and he, one here in the third. Two runners on, two outs. Fly ball to center field. That one is off the fence. Two runs are going to score, and Parada is going to double. I told you she could pop the ball. So another double this inning, drives in two. That's four RBIs tonight for Melissa. And now I gotta catch the score up. 10 to five, bottom of the third. Headspeth has singled score to run and lined out to third base. One and O is the count. As long as the Lady Lions can keep scoring every inning, they're going to have an advantage here. Fouls it off. If I have bronchitis, buy stock and halls. It's like candy. <laughs> Two and one to count. Fly ball. Shortstop is under it. And she'll make the catch, and that'll end the inning, but not before the Lady Lions score three. And we have played three complete innings, and after three, it's the Lady Lions 10. It's Anderson 5. You're watching Lion Country Broadcast Network. It's fueled by Vibe Live, but we're going to go ahead and keep it here. As we will go to the top of the fourth. So kind of going down the, the, the road of memory here for the five years I've been calling Lion Country, uh, Lion Country Sports. Um, we talked earlier about Emilio, the Sarge Juarez, who was with me the first year. And uh, also Chuck Licata. Randy Fry was the one teaching me everything. A lot of studs right there in those 
you know, those uh, sentences. <clears throat> Thank all those gentlemen that helped me through the years. Merle from KMAC, which is now Vipe. But Merle Bertrand also appreciate him as he's always had to deal with me in reschedules and everything else. And I want to give a shout out to Suna Vincant, who anytime I had an issue with the computer, she was on the horn and she was fixing it. <clears throat> Early on, my other half was part of this broadcast system. I'm going to give a shout out to Vanessa. Appreciate her for all the times that she was a producer and making sure everything ran right and kept us out of trouble with the computer systems. So leading off now will be Hernandez, who has walked and been hit by a pitch and scored a run. Line drive to left field, and the ball is caught. What a catch. Ava Vega coming up huge. The senior catching it off the ground. Out number one. Brings up Laura Flores, the first baseman. She singled, drove in a run, and had a fielder's choice. With a 10 to 5 leave, you, you feel pretty good. Leah looks, she looks like she's maybe getting to the groove again. If she's in the groove, this, this is going to get ugly. Line drive goes foul, one on one's account. And to be quite honest, the only reason why this game is actually a game thus far is the four errors that the Lady Lions have committed thus far. Swing and a miss. Strike two. The one-two count. High and out, way outside. Two and two. So one out here in the top of the four. Two and two is the count. Ground ball to third base. She comes up firing, and they get her out. Five three on the put out. So Pompa gets it over to uh, Zoe, or I'm sorry, Cece, for the out. Two outs. Jackson, the batter. She's Popped out to first and walked. Fly ball, Tamar's there. Makes the play and they go one, two, three for the first time tonight. So, not that I'm counting or keeping score, which actually I am. But if five runs are scored here in the bottom of the fourth inning, your Lady Lions are going to be district champions. So we've played three and a half. It is ten to five. You're watching Lion Country Broadcast Network fueled by Vipe Live. You can tell the pitmasters are making the magic happen every time you walk through the doors of Kreitz Market. The delicious smell of smoked meats greets your every visit. Not going to be in Lockhart for a while? Kreitz Market ships nationwide. Stop by Kreitz Market at 619 North Colorado in Lockhart or find us on the web, kreitzmarket.com. That's K-R-E-U-Z market.com. No sauce, no forks, just good taste naturally. All right, we are back top of the, or bottom of the fourth. Now I want to give a shout out <clears throat> to every single producer we've had that's worked for Lion Country Broadcast Network. It was McKelty Altier that started it all off. Well, you talk about a bodyguard there. She didn't let anybody mess with us. 
and <laughs> we've just had them from on the way down the line. We've had probably eight or nine producers. But the first one that ever did it for us was McKelty Altier, and we sure did appreciate her. She was very good on the computer as a high school junior. And for two years, we had her running the show. And we had a bunch of them in between the time and all the way to the end. And I do have to give a shout-out to Carson Smith, who was my most recent producer and uh, one of the basketball players. And then to her mother, Carrie Smith, who was also the color commentator and producer throughout basketball for me and through a couple softball games. So I want to thank them as well. Ground ball to second base, and they'll go 4-3 on the put out as Smith will go down. She had singled, scored a run, drove in a run, and doubled. So Zoe Pompa, the third baseman, has struck out twice. And again, with the wind blowing out, this young lady gets the ball where she wants it, and then we're going to see another one leave the park. <coughs> Ooh, a high fly ball to the right side. The right fielder is there, but it drops in. A single for Zoe. I think she might have hit the moon with that one. That was a high fly ball. So, Mackenzie Mendoza will be batting. I think we're going to get a courtesy runner. That is Bethany Ramirez that's going to take first. So, Mackenzie Mendoza has doubled, drove in two runs, walked. There's one out here, bottom of the fourth. Ten to five is a score. Basically, if the whoever wins this game, we could have you know co-district champions, but we're just going to go with the fact and go with the score that Lady Lions win tonight. They're going to be district champions all by themselves. So one of those account. Pitcher's getting a little bit wild here. Two and zero, and the runner's going to be going, and she'll get there. So two and zero is the count. I would hate to see us try to bunt at this moment. Swings the drive to left field, over the head of the left fielder. Ramirez will score on her way to third, and she's out, but she will get credited for a double. Her second double of the night. She'll get her third RBI of the night. So it is now 11 to 5, and we have the top of the order up. Ava Vega popped out to third, was hit by a pitch, and sacrificed her last at bat. In the dirt it goes. Two and zero. Oh. Three and zero. Oh. So three and zero. Oh, two outs here. Bottom of the fourth. Eleven to five. Lady Lions on top.
Three and one. Escobedo is scheduled up next. Ball four. So Tori Escobedo, the center fielder, has singled, scored a run. She's walked twice and scored a run. She has a runner at first with two outs. The pitcher Herrera is due up next. They call the strike. The runner safe. And I would just stay there. So Escobedo is at, or I'll check that, Vega is at um, second. <clears throat> one and one is your count. Two and one. And she'll foul that one out of play, so it goes to two and two. So Deuce is wild here. Two, uh, two and two's the count. Two outs. Runner at second. Escobedo the batter. Pop fly. Third baseman running it down, and she makes the catch. That'll end the fourth. The Lady Lions score another run, so we've played four complete. You're watching Lion Country Broadcast Network, fueled by Vibe Live. First Lockhart National Bank has been meeting the needs of Caldwell County since 1889. We now serve Travis County with a branch on Slaughter Lane and Hayes County with a branch in Kyle, plus a brand new location in San Marcos. As a member of each of the communities we serve, our relationship bankers, tellers, loan officers, and managers are committed to achieving the financial goals of every customer, one interaction at a time. So whether you're dreaming of a new house, buying a boat, or sending your children off to college, First Lockhart National Bank will be there every step of the way with financial services and guidance you can trust. Parenting is full of surprises. You never know what to expect. So after our son was born, I called my Texas Farm Bureau insurance agent to set up a life insurance policy in case something happened to me. Sawyer is now two. And we'll soon have a sister. There's no one else I would trust with protecting my family. Coverage and discounts are subject to qualifications and policy terms and may vary by situation. All right. Well, I've had another first for this season. We've made it to the fifth inning. Most of the games are over after three. This one has gone five. It's 11 to five. Lady Lions on top trying to win the district title this year. 
Pitcher Velasquez, who has struck out and singled, is the batter. I guess they figure if the other team can look in the dugout for signs, so can we. There's a ground ball. Ooh, it took a wild hop. So, hot shot to the left side gets her a single. Fortunately, nobody lost teeth on that one. That'll be her second single of the night. Brings up Harold, the catcher, who has struck out looking and flew out to right. One. Now I'm going to give a shout out to the guy that helped me the last two football seasons and throughout basketball. The man, Brandon Butler, doing the thing and helping me out. Appreciate the two years you gave me through those broadcasts. When we first started out, he was a little nervous. By the time we hit basketball season, he was like Dick Vitale. Two. <laughs> Line drive over the second baseman's head. Headsmith's going to throw to second. They get her. Great job by Headsmith. <laughs> so Ellie Scalabon, who's reached on an error by the first baseman, scored a run. She grounded out to second. For a number eight hitter, Scalabon does a great job of getting the bat on the ball. So one out here in the top of the fifth. Squared up. They're going to throw to second, and they get her. Tamar will tag her out. Parada with that perfect throw to get it down her. Two outs. Melissa with a great throw. Tamar with a great tag. And there's nobody on two outs. One of those to count here in the top of the fifth. Line drive way back to the wall. Scalaban's on her way to third, and she will stand up. Nope, she's going to slide. Didn't need to, but she'll get a triple. So a nice hit by Scalaban out to the wall, gets a triple. Cobb is the batter, plays second base. She has singled and scored a run and popped out to shortstop. I kind of wonder how this girl bats number eight, the way she's been hitting the ball tonight. But it'll bring up Cobb now. Two outs, runner at third. Swing and a miss. And he got her on the inside, 0-2. 0-2 is the count, runner at third, two outs. Top of the fifth. One and two.
fly ball. Center fielder's there, makes the catch. No runs on a hit. They'll strand one. We've now played four and a half innings of play. Your Lady Lions are on top, 11 to five. We're gonna leave it here. Going to give a shout out to Miss Raina here as we've shared the booth throughout this season and her sidekick, as I call it, because he's not the leader. But Larry Rodriguez, he's been the voice of a lot of sports. And he and I, we did a baseball or game or two together, and that's amazing considering he loves the Cubs and I love the Cardinals. And neither one of us threw a punch. But at that time, the, the Cubs were much superior than the Cardinals, so there was not much I could say. Didn't you guys win the World Series that year? That's what I thought. So we are now in the bottom of the fifth, 11 to five, Lady Lions. Four runs away from winning this district title are the Lady Lions. So Aaliyah Herrera, who's walked, doubled, drove in a run, and scored two runs, and she lined out with the bases loaded, which... <laughs> If she wouldn't have hit it right at the center fielder, that could have blown things wide open back then. She's also, as a pitcher, gotten a shutout in the last three innings. So, <coughs> All right, here we go. Maybe, I think it might be. There's a... Ground ball to the left side. Pitcher helps herself out with a single. So it'll be interesting to see if they actually pitch to Tamar this time. So Tamar has walked. They walked her again. So you will see no home run. At all on that one as they've walked her for a second straight time. So Malicia Pereira made them pay the last time they walked to get to her with a double and two RBIs. She has four RBIs on the night. And there's a line drive to left field. Left fielder can't make the play. They're, because if it was a bang-bang play, though, we were unable to to get anything out of it as they'll get us at third base for out number one. So runners at first and second, one out here in the bottom of the fifth. Jasmine Hitspeth, the batter, she singled, scored a run. Lined out to third, popped out to short. Ball one. It's going to be amazing to be able to call a district championship in year number five on the air. Swing and a miss, strike one. One and one's account. Yeah. 
two in one's account. Three and one. Fly ball to center field. And she'll make the catch. So there's two outs. So Elizabeth Smith comes up. She's singled. She's doubled. She's driven in a run, scored, and she grounded out to second her last at bat. She has runners at first and second with two outs here in the bottom of the fifth. Another one of those seniors. Nice little curve ball there, went outside. Two and oh. Reno. You would have to think maybe going to not let her swing on this, get another base runner for Zoe, who's got plenty of power. Strike number one. Ball four, bases loaded. Now batting third baseman, number 17, Zoe Pompa. So Smith will walk. Pump of the batter, she has struck out twice, singled and scored a run tonight. Two outs here, bases loaded. Swing and a miss. Zoe's trying to end the ball game with one swing of the bat. Ball high. There's a drive to center field, off the fence. Three runs are gonna score. A single that clears the bases. So Mackenzie Mendoza will come to the plate. She's doubled twice. She's walked and three RBIs, and they're going to go ahead and change their pitcher real quick. I'm going to get the scoreboard caught up. So April Cartwright will be the pitcher now. <coughs> so 14 to five is where we're at right now. Make sure the mic is back on. I forgot to turn it back on. 
Real quickly, since we're kind of at that stage of the game, I'd like to give a shout out to the five seniors for the Lockhart Lady Lions softball team. We have number one, Ava Vega. Number two, Leah Herrera. Number three, Elizabeth Smith. Number 10, Tori Escobedo. And number 15, or number 13, Melicia Parada. Those are your five seniors for the Lockhart Lady Lions this year, and they've had good careers. But as Lockhart always does, they just reload for the next year. 14 to five. Cart right on the hill. So ball one to Mendoza. Again, she's doubled twice. She has three RBIs and she's walked, but she has not scored a single run tonight. <laughs> There's a line drive to right field. It gets through. Zoe's on her way to third. Mendoza's going to have to slow up. Oh, they're going to send her. That is going to do it. Uh, inside the park home run for Mackenzie Mendoza, and they are district champions. So, <laughs> so both teams are headed to the playoffs. But uh, that'll do it there, 16 to five. Well, <laughs> 16 to 5 is how that one's going to end. I'm going to real quick, I'm going to go ahead and blow through a bunch of commercials here as I get the offensive and defensive players of the game. Uh, there's going to be a lot of offensive players of the game tonight, but there's only one defensive player of the game. But anyways, let's go to a commercial break. I'll come back with those winners, and we'll talk about your 2021 district champions. You're watching a Lion Country Broadcast Network fueled by Vipe Live. A broken promise is better than no promise at all. Well, you and I both know when we make a promise, we keep it. Chuck Nash Auto Group has been doing that for years. They offer up the kind of one-on-one -on -one service that will follow the taillights of your pre-owned vehicle deep into that gorgeous Texas sunset. By the way, Chuck Nash will give you $750 more for your car, buy or trade. And now you know the best of the story. Dr. Peterson and his staff at Chisholm Trail Clinic of Chiropractic are here to serve you. We've been voted best chiropractor and best chiropractor's office for five years running. Are you bothered by headaches, back pain, or neck pain? Call Chisholm Trail Clinic of Chiropractic at 512-668-4163 to make your appointment. Mention this ad to receive a consultation, exam, and x-rays if needed for only $20. Call 512-668-4163 and begin your journey to hope, healing, and health. Johnny and Sons Pain and Body has been Lockhart's premier collision repair and auto body shop since 1967. Certified iCar Standard, the highest ranking in the collision industry. For all your collision needs, come by and see Johnny and Sons 400 Blackjack in Lockhart. Johnny and Sons Pain and Body, we won't steer you wrong. Chisholm Trail Barbecue features slow cooked brisket, hot sausage, beef, and pork ribs done the right way. In a town famous for barbecue, Chisholm Trail is where the locals come to eat. Visit Chisholm Trail Barbecue, 1323 South Colorado in Lockhart, and come by after the game. Chisholm Trail Barbecue stays open until midnight after every home football game. All right, <clears throat> excuse me, we are back. And I'll try to limp my way through the rest of this broadcast here as the voice is going, going gone. <laughs> so anyways, <clears throat> real quick, give a real quick shout out. 
Uh, hang on, I gotta answer an e uh, a message real quick. So I uh, wanted to give a shout out to Merle uh, back at Vibe, who uh, again a lot to do with what we do. Um, again, Suna Van Cant, because without her, a lot of times I would have been lost. My computer went down or whatever, and she would save the day. Uh, Chuck Lakata, a mentor, kind of got me my college gig as well, and appreciate him. Uh, and then, of course, the Rock and Rev, Randy Fry. Thank you, sir, for what you do. As I said, I'm trying to limp my way through the final stages here as I'm losing my voice. But uh, anyways, a great night for the Lady Lions. They, went, they haven't gone undefeated yet. They still have a game Tuesday. But they are undefeated right now, and they're only undefeated when it mattered most, and that was against the only team that could catch them. And they were able to beat them 16-5 to on a basically uh, walk-off home run by Mackenzie Mendoza. And uh, like I said, there's going to be a lot of Chuck Nash offensive players of the game. I mean, there are girls that came up big throughout the night going straight down the line in the batting order. Uh, Leah Herrera, our, pi our pitcher, she doubled, she singled, she walked, she drove in a run, she scored two runs. She will be one of our Chuck Nash offensive players of the game, and she's a senior. Uh, Melissa Parada, she walked, she scored a run, she doubled, drove in two runs. Actually, she drove in four runs tonight, scored two runs. She also is a senior and will be the Chuck Nash offensive player of the game. Then you go down to another senior, Liz Smith or Elizabeth Smith. She singled, she doubled, she walked, and she scored two runs tonight, drove in a run. She will be a Chuck Nash offensive player of the game. Zoe Pampa. She did strike out her first two at-bats, but the last two were they came up big. She singled twice. She cleared the bases with her last single. She scored two runs and had three RBIs. And so Zoe Pompa will be the Chuck Nash offensive player of the game. Mackenzie Mendoza, who's hit, <laughs> base clearing, uh, you know, walk off home run. Uh, she doubled twice. She homered. Uh, she drove in four, no, five runs tonight and scored a run. And uh, she will be Chuck Nash, Offensive Player of the Game. And then the, the two-headed monster, Tamar Reyna, the junior. She singled. She was intentional. Hang on just a moment. I'll be right back with you. I got to do something for somebody. I apologize because I was the last person in the booth and they wanted me to turn the music off. So I will get back to where I was in the Tamar Reyna situation. Tamar, who's just murdered the ball all year long. She was intentionally walked twice. She scored four runs tonight. She hit, uh, she had two RBIs. She hit a single and she hit a home run over the fence. And after she hit the home run, they just started walking her. But she will also be a Chuck Nash offensive player of the game. Not to mention, her defense tonight earns her the Johnny and Sons defensive player of the game. <clears throat> Excuse me. I do apologize. So that will do it for us tonight. Uh, Lady Lions will win 16-5. to um, They are the number one seed in their district for the playoffs. They will play the, the number four seed from the other district. We don't know when that's going to be yet or where it's going to be. Uh, but anyways, that's coming up. Now for uh, myself, I've been with Lion Country for five years. I appreciate Kevin Mills and Jeffrey Michelson in allowing me to do this. Kind of made me the director of broadcasting while doing this and uh, had a lot of good memories, had a lot of good times calling the games. And uh, this will most likely be my last game of, the, of my career with Lion Country. 
as I'll be stepping down at the end of the season and uh, moving on. We'll have to see where the district game is played. My real-time job may keep me away from calling that game. We'll just have to see when it is and where it is. But the Lady Lions have won the district. They are the 2021 district champions. Again, my shout-out to Randy Fry, the Rock and Rev. Thank you, sir, for always being there and getting me involved in this five years ago. And to everybody that's watched and listened through the years, thank you for being attentive. Thank you for watching us and supporting us. And it's been a blast. And with that, I will sign it off tonight. 16-5 Lady Lions, 2021 District Champions. You all have a great evening. Good night.